Hey guys, this is my review for Star Trek Into Darkness. Now before I start talking about that film, I thought I might give you a little bit of background on what I think about Star Trek in general, and also what I thought about the last film that came out in 2009. Um, but as far as Star Trek goes, I absolutely love it. I'm a big fan. I wouldn't consider myself a Trekkie because I didn't get into Deep Space Nine. I never saw Enterprise or anything like that. But I just, I love the next generations. And I also adore the original series. That's kind of my sentimental favorite. I just love that it's science fiction. It's actual science fiction. It's not trying to be, you know, Star Wars or anything like that. It's about ideas and it's trying to get people to think. And that's why I think the show has lasted so long and has transcended so many generations. It's because it's about social commentary, which really does resonate in today's society. Uh, then, of course, many decades later, J.J. Abrams comes into the picture and decides he wants to take Star Trek and cater it to the mainstream mainstream audiences. And because of that, it's, you know, Star Trek has now sacrificed the complexity for the entertainment value. And Star Trek now, for the hardcore Trekkies, is no longer Star Trek. It's become kind of Star Wars for the new generation. Um, but, you know... I kind of do have my issues with that. I, I like to think when I watch my movies, but most people today don't, which is unfortunate. But I loved this 2009 Star Trek a lot. Um, I think it had a lot of energy and attitude, and they kept it nostalgic without being too overt. You know, they had a lot of uh, homages to the original series, but it, it was fun and it was cheeky. And... Um, I consider the movie dumb fun, but it's really well done, well done, dumb fun. That was kind of hard to say. Um, so, you know, even though I, it's not really Star Trek, it's well done. To me, it's what the Star Trek prequels should have been. So what, which is why I think J.J. Abrams is really a great director for Star Wars, but that's, that's another video sometime. Um, but now we have Into Darkness, which is now the sequel to the Star Trek prequel. Uh, and uh, it's a bit confusing, but it's, I think it was very entertaining and I enjoyed it a lot. I think it was worth the money, but it had a lot of problems and it is not as good as the first one, or at least I didn't think it was as good as the first one. I think some people might disagree. Uh, I, there were things about it that I liked, you know, I'll start with the things I liked and then get into the things I didn't like. First of all, I loved the first half hour of it. I thought it had a lot of energy in it, and it, the opening sequence was really cool. It does definitely hark back into the original series, where they're on a on a planet, and um, it's just there's this big action sequence. It's kind of like the opening to maybe Indiana Jones or something. They start right in the middle of an action sequence. It's got lots of vibrance. And it's, you know, I, I like the interplay between Spock and Kirk, particularly with what happens in that first action sequence. You know, of course, how it always is. Um, Kirk rules by emotion and gut, and Spock thinks that's completely illogical. That's his line. And, you know, it's interesting to hear them talk about that. It never gets old to me. And um, not only that, but I liked the humor and the banter between the whole, the whole cast, the interplay between all of them. You know, I thought they, most for the most part, I really liked this cast... And um, they still prove that they're worthy of Star Trek, in my opinion. And uh, I really did like Benedict Cumberbatch. I think that's how you say his name. Uh, he is a, a great villain, and, and he hams it up a lot. And he's definitely campy and over the top. But I think in this in instance, in the context of the film, it works for me. And I do like that he's a more complex villain than, say, Nero from the 2009 film. Uh, here, he's really challenging Kirk, not only in a battle of prowess, but also in a battle of wits. And the two try to outsmart each other. So it's almost like intellectual sparring. And I really enjoyed that. I want, I wish there was more of that. Because really, you get one kind of big scene between the two of them, and that's it. And I wanted to see a lot more of it. Which brings me to a lot of the problems I had with this movie. I think that there was too much action and not enough character. Whereas in the first film, the 2009 one, I think that they were able to balance the two pretty well. You know, they had a lot of action, but they gave, they had pauses, you know, in order for the characters to develop and to get to know each other. And in this one, I think it was just action, 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 action. And for the most part, most of the chemistry that you see, at least in the second and third act, it's just people yelling and, you know, barking snarky comments at each other. And to me, that's not 
really character development. It's fun, but not quite what I want to see from a Star Trek film. Because again, to me, Star Trek is about the ensemble, the people on the ship, and it's not so much about all the explosions and the battles. Um, so yeah, too much action, and I don't think there was enough room to breathe. And one of the big problems I had with the action sequences, I think some of them were very good, a lot like the first one. There were some good ones and some that I didn't like so much. It's, I think it comes down to the cinematography. I don't know who J.J. Abrams' cinematographer is, but I think he needs to find a different look because, in my opinion, the camera is so close to people's faces and so close to the action. There's lots of swish pans and, and lens flares that you're kind of... Sp spatially unaware. There's not enough spatial coherence and dimension so that when you're in these action sequences, it's hard for you to tell what's going on. I mean, not impossible, but you know, there are times when you're like, wait, what ship are we on now? Which you know, it, it's difficult. And I want more spatial awareness in all, you know, not, not just this film, but in all the films today. I think cinematography is lacking in big blockbuster films, uh, particularly for action sequences. Um, also, I think that the plot was a little bit um, complex, but in an unnecessary way. I know I said I like when Star Trek becomes complex, but that's when I'm talking about ideas and concepts. Here, I think the technicalities of the plot are just too, just a tad, uh, too complex. And I would rather see that tilt in favor of the themes and instead it's the opposite. Um, but you know, that being said, I enjoyed the movie, you know, it's too long in my opinion, and it's, you know, it does sag just a tad and in parts, but it kept winning me back with with the humor and, and with some of the, the emotions of the characters. I just, I wanted to see more of that. And before I forget, there there's one scene at the very end, it's in the third act, and I, I'm not going to give away any spoilers because this is spoiler free, but there's a scene where they pay homage to another very famous scene in the Star Trek universe. And to me, it was way overplayed. It was completely, it was just a gimmick. It was so contrived. And again, I said, I don't mind it when they pay homage and do little cheeky references to the original series, but this one, it, it was completely, it missed the mark completely. It just fell flat on its face, the scene did. And right when you think, okay, this is this is not right for the new Star Trek universe, it does it again in a really cringeworthy way, in my opinion, and I, I just didn't like that. Um, but yeah, I, you know, with when you're doing a new film that that's kind of a prequel to another one, it needs to be able to stand on its own. And in this instance, they relied too much on the nostalgic aspect of Star Trek. So that scene was the one scene that I think completely failed and fell flat on its face. But, you know, that's just one scene out of the entire movie. Again, it's not really Star Trek, and it does not have nearly the chutzpah and the, the punch of the 2009 film, but it's still a lot of fun, and I would recommend it. Now, if you didn't like the first film, if you're a hardcore Trekkie, and you don't like that it's become action schlock, then you're definitely not going to like this one, because this one has even more action. But if you did like the first one, I think you'll like this one. I don't know if you'll like it as much, but it's still fun and definitely worth paying full price. So I recommend it. But anyway, that's my review for Star Trek Into Darkness. And um, please let me know what you think about the movie. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. The link is below. And thank you for listening.